Those guys, oh, Jamal. Oh, he asked for Israel in his uh, interview? Yeah. Um, yeah, Israel's a, a weight class below him now, but uh, we've seen that. Yeah, he, he, Jamal Hill, when he's ready, is, is, is the fight that makes sense. Do you have any idea, what, like, how his recovery is going? Is he informed, like, when he might be ready to fight? Going good. I, I, apparently, it's good. I, I don't know. Okay. You know I don't talk about this shit. Yeah. Okay. Tom Aspinall, uh, incredible. No controversy there whatsoever, I yep. guess. Um, man, what did you think about that? I think we all expected Both those to guys quick. stepping up, taking it on short notice, and, uh, you know, both big, heavy hitters. That could have gone either way, and Aspinall got it. When you, when you see that guy, you know, hailing from England, obviously, do you immediately think we got to take his next fight, we got to do it in England, like have a title fight over there, or do you think that? Well, with a lot of these guys right now, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at possible uh, Spain, UK, um, France, you know, yeah. all good stuff. All, all new territories or places we uh, haven't been in a while or haven't been, or it, it's all good stuff. We saw Stipe tonight, and obviously we wanted to have Stipe and John. Is that still the fight to make, or do you feel like maybe Tom deserves to fight John or deserves to fight Stipe, or maybe that's a better fight? No. You do, you do those two. Right. Uh, th th those two both deserve that fight. That's the fight they want. Uh, what I love is that John Jones, you know, as soon as he heard that he was injured and he knew how bad it was, went right to L.A., got the surgery, and he's, always, he's already in, in, in rehab. So um, physical therapy, I should say. Uh, he's in physical therapy. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. John Jones is in physical therapy already. All right. We're happy about it. Thanks. And I guess so, uh, do, you, do you anticipate Tom defending the interim title because of like how they'll have to wait for that fight to happen? Do you, do you expect him to fight somebody else? I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, um, took this fight on short notice. Obviously, he looked great. He's got plenty of money to chill out for a minute, and uh, we'll see. Right. So last thing for me, I just want to ask you, I mean, 30th anniversary show, I know you're not always the sentimental type or, you know, have time to even reflect, but I guess special moment in the company history, what does tonight mean for you? Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, it's, it's our 30th. Um, I was thinking about this earlier, you know, the corruption that kept us out of New York City for so long, for us to come in here um, in just seven years, and you think about this historic arena, this incredible city, and for us to be number one, two, and three all time um, on our 30th and great card tonight, great fights, great crowd. You, you couldn't really button up a 30th anniversary any better than tonight. Dana, to your right. Yeah. I know you follow boxing for a long time, and Joe Lewis, who won a title in this arena, was known for that, like, six-inch left hook that he had, you know, short left hook. And I kind of thought of that when uh, Alex landed that punch tonight, that little short hook on, uh, on Yuri. It was like that kind of power is rare, and you don't see that very often. Do you think that that's what separates him kind of from the rest of the pack? Yeah, and, and what's crazy, too, is, like, the first leg kick hurt him. Uh, he knew it. He kept kicking that leg, and... That leg was going to be a problem uh, as the fight went on. And, you know, the kicking power, the punching power, he moves like a middleweight, uh, you know, and, and, and he's pretty nasty. And Yuri's kind of a tough guy to figure out. With Very. All those and, he's and he's tough, dur durable, tough guy. Right. And I guess, you know, what I'm impressed with with uh, Alex in that case is the fact that he's seven fights in his UFC career and what is it, 10 fights or 11 fights overall, and he's able to deal with those things. Yuri was switching stances a little bit early and, you know, kind of the way he was moving. Does that impress you, the fact that how Alex has grown in this short period of time in MMA and he's adapted and it seems like he has a complete game already in just, you know, how many fights it is? Yeah. I mean, I think that he and Israel Adesanya – if you look at them coming from, uh, you know, one style and being able to make the transition and do as well as they've done here, it's, it's, it's very impressive. And then the last question for me, you know, I, I asked Aspen all this before the fight. I said, hey, dude, you know, you saw what Volkanovski did and saw what Usman did, and they took the fights on short notice and they lost. Did it give you any pause? And he said, well, you can never win the title sitting on the couch. And I wonder what your, your thought is on that, because sometimes if guys aren't preparing, they don't give themselves the best chance to win, right? And the fact that, you know, Alex uh, Volkanovski and, and Kermaro did what they did was commendable, but they also didn't give themselves the best chance to win. But you still believe in guys taking that opportunity right in 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 doing what tom did tonight yeah 100 percent. i mean when, when you get to that level 
I mean, you know, you're one of the, I mean, Volkanovski is pound for pound number one guy in the world. Uh, you know, you definitely jump on those opportunities when you get them. I guess the only thing I was saying, though, is if you're not training on a, like, I know all these guys work out, but on a regular basis, they, right? His guys told me in the ring tonight that Aspinall was on vacation when, when he got the call. So, you know what I mean? Uh, this is a crazy business, and, and, and there's very small windows of opportunity. When, when big opportunities pop up, you have to take them in life, period, but especially in this business. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, John Jones is getting ready to fight Stipe Miocic and, and, and tears the, you know, his peck off the bone. And you just you don't know what's going to happen. You never know. Um, so when you get them and you're not hurt, yeah, you take them. Dana, in the conversations you've had with John and Stipe, do you think that is a retirement fight for them both, or do you think they could be convinced to stick around and maybe fight Tom after? So I, uh, I had uh, lunch the other day with uh, Stipe, and, you know, Stipe is very focused. Listen, it's one of those fights you have the best heavyweight of all time versus the greatest m martial artist of all time. That's the fight they want. It's the fight that makes sense. It's the fight that, that should happen. Um, and... Uh, I asked Stipe that question. He says, I don't even know. All I care about right now is John Jones. It's the only thing I'm focused on. I want this fight really bad. With Tom, right, it's not just the way, it's not that he's winning, it's the way he's winning and how quick he's winning. Do you think this guy could be the new generation of heavyweight that likes we haven't seen before and could be even go on to be one of the best in that division? Yeah, so obviously what we've seen of him is great, but I hear even better things about him. I mean, I hear in the gym, this guy is an absolute beast. He, he kicks the shit out of everybody. Um, and uh, the people who surround him and know him well really believe in this guy. So um, obviously what he's shown us so far has been unbelievable. I can't wait to see what's next. Now you've got two champions from the UK. Is there a chance we get a pay-per-view back there next year? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be going all kinds of places next year. So um, yeah, it's fun. I always talk about, you know, how do we beat this year? How do we how do we beat this year? And it's just you couldn't write a script better than reality. What really happens and how it plays out and where you end up, it's 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 what's so fun about this business. Yeah. Last one for me, you know, you number one, number two, number three in Gates at MSG. I know you're not a guy who holds on to grudges very much, but is this the perfect way to say fuck you to those people who kept you out of New York? That, say that again? Is this the perfect way to say fuck you to the people who <laughs> kept you out of New York? Yeah, well, believe me, the people who kept us out of New York went to fucking prison. So uh, <laughs> they're good. But yeah, the, the culinary union from Las Vegas, fuck you. Yeah. Dan, Dan the farmer here. Uh, I know you gave him a bonus, but what do you make of Benoit Saint-Denis as a talent? Uh, a lot of people online are already labeling him as one of the more violent fighters uh, in the division, and he already wants his shot at the BMF title, and then he's already talking about fighting Islam so early into his career. So what do you make of him as a talent moving forward? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously tonight was a big night for him. Looked great. Uh, he's one of the hottest prospects in Europe right now, period. So, um, yeah, we're excited. Similar question about Diego Lopes. You gave him another bonus, but he seemed to get one of the bigger ovations even before this fight, even at ceremonials. Um, he's already calling for main events in Mexico. Uh, so a similar question, what do you, where do you think you can take a, a fighter of his caliber? And it seems like he's already a budding star. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He's fun. He's exciting. Um, I like everything about this kid. The answer is, is yes, you could do a lot with him. And the last one for me, uh, Lupe Godinez became the first female UFC fighter to have four wins in one calendar year, uh, and her first fight was in May, so four wins in like seven months or something like that. Um, she needs a month off. She seems a little bummed about it, but where, where do you see the future for her, too? <laughs> She's bummed out about a month off. That's awesome. Listen, that, that, those type of people are right up my alley. I love that stuff. And when, when, you, when you see fighters who have that mentality and that's how they are, you know, it's like Hamzat when he bursts onto the scene. People, people get who are real and, 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 and who are real fighters. They love that shit. So, yeah, I love it. And last one for me. Uh, is there any location for the Ilya Taporia Volkanovsky fight? Ilya seemed to be hinting at possibly Los Angeles. Um, not yet. I assume the same thing for the Sean O'Malley-Cheeto Vera fight, no location yet? None. Okay. 
we would have announced if we, if we did. But hey, Dave, to your right. <laughs> right here. Uh, hey. I know you touched on it a little bit with Alex Pereira, but uh, seven fights in the UFC, two belts. Uh, no one had done it faster than nine fights, which was Randy Couture and then BJ Penn did it at 11. Um, just kind of the progress of this, like how remarkable is what he's done in this amount of time? Yeah, no, it's it's, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, he's uh, him and Israel both coming from a one style, and then and then coming in here and accomplishing what they've accomplished. I mean, that stuff didn't that was, that was happening like 20 years ago. Now to come in and do it at this at this day and age in this era is incredibly impressive. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I guess it was said on the broadcast that apparently Tom Aspinall told Laura Sanko that he strained a muscle in his back pretty much right after he accepted the fight and was barely able to train. Were you aware of that? And no. I guess how much more does that make? Not until right the second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's impressive. See, his guys didn't even tell me that in the octagon. They were telling me he was on vacation when, when he got the call for the fight, but they didn't say anything about him being injured. Yeah, and you had uh, quite the group with you, cage side for the main card, Donald Trump, Kid Rock, uh, all those people. What was kind of just the vibe like? What were they saying with this remarkable main card that you know had five finishes? All those guys are fight fans. Tucker Carlson's first time, and I, I always tell people that uh, nobody walks into a UFC event live and then walks out and says, "Yeah, I don't ever want to see one of these again." And uh, you know, he was just telling me when he was leaving, "This is unbelievable. I I loved it, and I'm, I definitely want to see more." And uh, you mentioned yesterday in your scrum that the Sphere, the show there, is a done deal, but you didn't really elaborate. Is there any more you can tell us on timeline? Is it still going to be Mexican Independence Day? Or Mexican earlier? Independence Day. We are booked for the Sphere, and we are already working on uh, the creative for the show. Does it seem like it's going to be a challenge, or can you give us any insight? It's going to be a massive challenge, and I love every minute of it. I can't wait to dive into this thing. We're, we're, we're reaching out. As I, as I get more... Oh, more of the pieces of the puzzle put together, I will, uh, I'll let you guys know as, as it comes, uh, comes along. But I'm super excited about this. I love, um, I love challenges. Everybody keeps saying to me, I don't understand how you're going to put the octagon in there. I don't understand how you're going to do this. I don't understand how you're going to do that. I'm going to remember that I said this to you tonight. I'm going to put on the greatest live combat sports show anybody has ever seen. Awesome. And just lastly for me, uh, we were in Saudi Arabia a couple weeks ago. Conor McGregor was there, and he spoke to us for a little bit. He was pretty much begging, saying, like, just please give me my date. Please give me my date. Uh, the Schmo reported tonight that his sources are saying Chandler is happening at UFC 300 in April. Is there anything you can tell us about Conor? What did the Schmo report? He said that it's hap uh, the Chandler fight is in the works for UFC 300 in April. Got it. Anything you can tell us? Well, if the Schmo said it, it must be true. <laughs> Well, that's the only report out there, but have you yeah. talked with Connor? Like, he, he just seemed very keen to get a date as soon as possible. He is definitely chomping at the bit to fight again. Um, there is no date. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Dana, uh, to your right in the back. Uh, we saw some great performances from the young fighters tonight, guys like Diego Lopez and Joshua Van. Uh, how quickly do you want to see these guys back in the octagon, and what impressed you about them? Everything was impressive about them. I don't know how fast they'll be back. Um, it's going to you know, there's a lot of different things that determine uh, how soon somebody goes back and fights, but it's, it's not anything that I'm even thinking about right now. And then Dana, to your left over here. Mm -hmm. Could be a little premature, but 2024, any plans to come back to the Northeast? I know maybe March, Atlantic City is circulating. Wondering if you could uh, confirm that. We have been talking about Atlantic City, yeah. We have been talking about Atlantic City. We've been talking about Jersey. Um, yeah, we'll see. Dana, to your right. Uh, what I, do you I, don't, I don't even have... The, the locations for the fights that I already have booked, we're still working on, so I'm not, you know what I mean? Sorry, what do you see next for Yuri Prochaska? What do you see next for Yuri? He just fought 25 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> Dana, please. I have no plans for him right now. Um, you know, he needs to go take some time off, relax, heal, his legs busted up. And then uh, we'll figure out what's next for him. He'll be back. He's a tough, durable guy. And, you know, we'll figure out what's next. Thank you. Dana, Thank on you. your left. Hey, hello. Uh, we have a 22 years old fighter in France called Baki. He's currently in 8 0. Um, he's fighting next week for the welterweight belt at RS Fighting. Um, we also know he was Hamzat's sparring partner for his fight against Kamaru Usman. And what do you think of him? Do you have an eye on Baki? And are you open to his rival on UFC League? What was the question? Whoa. It was about a fighter, this Hamzat sparring partner. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Got but it. I do not. You do not know the team? No. Oh, okay. But if he wins, I probably will. And now you just told me about him, so I'll have to check him out. Okay. Keep an eye on him. Yeah. <laughs> Dana. Cool. Yeah. In the middle. Um, just wondering, now we've got two UFC champions from the UK, if you have changed your mind about potentially doing a UK stadium show? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could. I love the O2. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how he progresses and what happens. And, you know, but it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to have a heavyweight champion from the UK. So. Uh, and just another one, um, Deontay Wilder the other day said that he's interested in transitioning to MMA. Just wondering if that's something you're interested in and if there's been any conversations between you and Wilder. Deontay Wilder expressed interest in transitioning into MMA. Just your thoughts on that and if that could potentially happen. I like Deontay. We have a good relationship and uh, um, it's interesting, you know what I mean? You never see this shit happening. You never see the boxers going, oh, I want to come over there and, uh, and fight in the UFC. So we'll see what happens. And Dana, just, um, sorry, just one more from me. Yeah. Um, I've seen a video of Stipe entering the arena. He seems to have a bit of a limp. Is there any injury issues with him at the moment? Uh, Stipe was limping? Yeah. I, was, I had lunch with him the other day. He didn't say anything about any injuries. Um, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't mention anything to me. Dana, over yes, here. Yes, sir. Uh, congratulations on another great night in you, uh, New York City. Yes, sir. Uh, everybody was commenting about how respectful everybody was to each other. All the fighters respected each other. You know, the temperature was very, very low for this fight card. We were talking about that, too. Yeah, and it, you know, just it, it was built on great fighters and just talented fighters and the best in the world. Like, uh, the people that were complaining about it, do uh, the tastes of the MMA fan need to change? Uh, or do the fighters need to change where... You know they uh, you know need to do better promoting, but like at the same time, like uh, how do you feel about that, or what were your thoughts about it? You talked a little fast for me here at the end. Were you, were you saying how do I feel about the respect that was shown between everybody? Correct. You loved yeah. it. I mean, I was talking about Aspinall and and, and Sergey. I mean, the, their their exchange when they were being read the rules, their exchange after the fight. Um, everybody was super respectful. This is one of those fights where you don't need a ton of. Shit talk, everybody knew. People who were in the know, when the, when the Jones fight fell out, people that know the sport knew that that fight was a real fight and was going to be good, um, and, and everybody was respectful. It's, it's actually kind of cool when, uh, when that happens, and it makes the stare downs much easier on me. And we uh, also saw you dipping your toes in uh, boxing. Uh, do we, are we going to see more uh, pay-per-views in boxing, more uh, things on uh, UFC Pipe Pass? Uh, what's, your, what's the current plans for boxing? Well... I mean, right now, I like Tom Loeffler. I like his show. I like his matchmaking. Um, I, you know, HBO's out, Showtime's out, and uh, I'm going to use UFC Fight Pass to sort of be, uh, you know, I'm going to be the network. That's what I'm going to be. And it, the, the production was this way, very, very fast paced. There was fights after fights. Like, yeah, you know, obviously with the last two boxing fights, you know, Nike will take his boxing to go to sleep at night. It was talking for two hours and then the fight. Fucking like <laughs> brutal. <laughs> brutal. Try to sit through a live boxing show. Try and do it. Show up to the first fight and try and do it. Um, yes, yeah, so if you notice, the pace of the show moves fast. The matchmaking is real. Even Callum Walsh, who, you know, uh, you know, Freddie Roach believes in a lot and is a, is a prospect right now, they threw him in there with a real fight. This guy's kid was 13-1, and one, um, nine knockouts, turned it into a street fight at the end. And, you know, th th these are the kind of fights that you'll see in that promotion, and that, that's what I love about it. I love the pace, matchmaking, and uh, everything else about it. He's got a lot of good up-and-coming talent. The other thing you don't see a lot, you always get this uh, in the boxing world, you get the... The, the, the big fish in a small pond type stuff. They never go outside there. You had East Coast versus West Coast. You know, that's the type of stuff you're going to see on Fight Pass with, 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 uh, with 360 Promotions and Tom Loeffler. Awesome. And uh, one more question for me. And we saw you sitting next to Triple H. How's the relationship been uh, with uh, TKO? And how's uh, been working with uh, Vince McMahon and Triple H? Maybe some cross-pollination like Pride did with New Japan Pro Wrestling? Or no, no. Th listen, if, if, if there's something there... Like Ronda going over there, like Brock coming over here, you know, if if that, whether we were with them or not, if that was the case, we we, we would we would do that stuff. Um, but the relationship has been incredible. Vince has been, Vince has been an amazing partner. I always like Triple H uh, and Stephanie. So uh, yeah, no, we have, we're having a, we're having a good time with those guys. So you're saying that there's not going to be a battle of the billionaires too between Dana White and Vince McMahon? Is that correct? Is what's that? 
<laughs> it, there's not going to be a battle of the billionaires, too, between Dana White and Vince McMahon. At it's all over. It's all over. We're buddies now. <laughs> yes. Now we're friends. Congratulations. Thank you. Dana, down here to your right. Yep. In the 12 years since John, has claimed, John Jones claimed the light heavyweight title, you've seen many and many a prospect who's been touted as the potential man to beat him. Now, I know there's still a lot that has to happen in terms of John and Stipe, but if John does st stick around after that, how do you rate Tom Asimov's chances of beating him in comparison to the other fighters of previous time? Well, let's see how John heals. Uh, let's see how he looks when he comes back from this injury. Obviously, he's going to fight Stipe. Let's see how that goes. And then, um, you know, John Jones is so good. I mean, you, you can doubt him. You can this, you can that. You not like him. The guy's never lost a fight. Moved up to heavyweight, made it look really easy. Um, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. i got to see how everything sort of plays out. And how... how how big do you think it is now? We've obviously previously had two uh, UK champions in Leon Edwards and Michael Bisping. How big is it having a heavyweight champion? I know it's interim, but still. No, it's huge. I mean, listen, whenever you get a heavyweight champion from anywhere, you know what I mean, outside the country, it's a big deal. And uh, to have a heavyweight champion in the UK who is a bad dude and legit and everybody around him claims that he's, he, he's, he's that good. And uh, he's a great guy, great personality. It's a home run. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Dana, right down the middle Dana, here. Over here. Um, so uh, Tom was talking to us earlier this week about the heavyweight division. He sees kind of an, a golden age coming, a new golden age for heavyweight MMA. You know, more athletic guys um, that can do a lot more. They're not kind of plotting and maybe like the, the way maybe we saw in, in different generations before. What's your take on his thoughts on that? I don't understand the question. Do you, what do you see as far as the heavyweight division right now? Like in the future, like in the next like five to ten years kind of thing, do you see different heavyweights now than maybe we saw in past generations? Well, you're going to. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's not the case, we're in trouble. Uh, you know, uh, the sport keeps evolving. The athletes keep evolving. And, um, you know, Aspinall is amazing. He looked great. He's got a chin, too. He ate a couple shots tonight and, you know, um, and like I was just saying with this gentleman over here, we have a heavyweight champion from the UK, so it's awesome. Now, do you really want to keep him on the shelf for you know as much as maybe a year for Jones and uh, and Miocic to kind of sort things out, or are you gonna maybe have to start considering other options in the interim? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. I, I talked about that earlier. Uh, we'll see how this what happens. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, he's got some money, and. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question yet. You guys love to come to the Garden. Obviously, November is, is your time of the year. Have you guys ever considered or are you considering maybe two times in the coming years at all? Um, yeah, the thing is, too, when you, when, when you come to the Garden, you want to bring your A game. You want to bring the right fight. Uh, you know, we'll probably be back the end of next year, and we'll be one, two, three, and four. And you guys have, obviously, you've got a relationship now with James Dolan because you... Over the next three years, we'll, we'll end up being the top ten. <laughs> well, you, you've got this relationship now with James Dolan. You've been working with him for many years here. He's got the sphere, of course. You guys have that going on now, too. Is that something you guys have ever talked about? Is there more interest on their end to get more? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. They'd have us here every weekend if we could. Um, and, yes, I have a great relationship with Dolan. And, uh, you know, I've been terrorizing him about the sphere. And uh, we, got, we got it done, so I'm excited. Dana, right down the middle here. Um, Nate Diaz was in attendance tonight. I'm just curious if you got the opportunity to speak with him. And I guess kind of where does his relationship with you stand since he left the promotion you guys? No, I didn't, I didn't see him tonight, but uh, he called like two days ago and seeing if he could get some tickets. And, of course, he can have tickets. This is his house. He can come back whenever he wants to. But, you know, we, we haven't talked about any fights or anything like that. Gotcha. So no business talk since the Jake Paul thing? No. Dana, uh, there were some rumors uh, a little bit ago about the Islam Mahachev and Charles Oliveira rematch, uh, which were kind of quickly dismissed by Ali and the management team. Uh, is that still the plan going forward to have that rematch? And if so, uh, when would that be? Eventually, but Volkanovski's. Uh, you talking about Volkanovski? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Mahachev yeah, and Oliveira. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we don't have anything right now. Maybe, maybe in the summer. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Dana that was here. never a fight, by the way. That was announced. That was never, never a fight. Dana over here, right next to him. 
the the co-main event was for the interim heavyweight title and we're preparing for Jones versus Miocic, but the original plan that we wanted, we all wanted, was uh, John Jones versus Francis Ngannou. Obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, I've seen in boxing that there's a lot of cross-promotion in, in the divisions, whether you see people from top rank going to Showtime or anything of that nature. Is there an opportunity for you to cross-promote with the PFL for, say, a jones Ngannou fight, and is there anything specifically stopping that from happening? Is there any way to stop it from happening? Is there anything that's stopping that specific fight or a specific cross-promotion with the PFL from happening? No, I'm not interested in that. I, we tried to make that fight. They didn't want to do it. And uh, it's done. He doesn't fight here anymore. I'm not interested. So no fights with the PFL just in general? Should I? Possibilities. We got one, two, and three. They can't sell a fucking gate. Oh, talk to me. And Dana, uh, it's just a stupid question, but go ahead. Talk to me. Why, should, why, why would I do that? I tried to make the fight here. They didn't want to do it. But I should co-promote with, 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 the, with the, you know, with, with like a Bellator or, or a PFL. Why, 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 why should I do that? Talk to me. I guess it's just, I guess, a partnership with ESPN or anything like that, just in general, with, with just co-promoting an MMA to make, I guess, MMA fans happy just for everyone to be involved with each other. What? Because of ESPN? As a partnership, yes. You win the dumb question of the night. Congratulations, sir. What did you want to say? Did you want to chime? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg tore his ACL a couple of days ago. Uh, he was training for an MMA fight, but he's still super into the UFC. He wants to come back and compete. Um, what's it like having somebody like Mark be into the UFC? He was into this fight tonight. He was into the Vulcan Islam fight. What's it like having somebody with his influence be into the UFC? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of influential people that are into the UFC, and, and it's... Uh, it's always a good thing. I mean, it's never a bad thing. But yes, Zuckerberg is, is obsessed. I mean, he's so obsessed he blew his ACL out training like a maniac. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. It's the, I have a very good relationship with Zuckerberg. He loves the sport. And, uh, you know, yes, the answer is yes. Having somebody like Mark Zuckerberg love the sport is incredible. Dana, uh, just wondering, I know you touched on it a little bit, but let's just say if like a fan approaches you tomorrow and they said that, they heard Alex say, Adesanya, come to daddy, and they want to see that fight again. Just what would you say to someone that's really hoping to see those two get in, get in the octagon? Listen, anything is possible. I mean, Alex moved up a weight class. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't see Izzy moving up a weight class. But um, I don't know. I'm, I, I mean, I'm sure people do want to see it again. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to that question yet. We'll. We'll see when Izzy comes back. What he wants to do. Where his head is. I mean, if you look at what he's accomplished in, in his time here too, you know, um, whatever he wanted to do. If he wanted to move up and fight Pereira again, you know, we'd probably do it. Probably give him a uh, a fight at that weight first if he wins, and then then give him a shot at Pereira. I don't know. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say that we would never do it. Back to uh, Dana, right back here. Uh, 2024 is coming up. What percentage of, or a rough percentage of the uh, fight nights do you think will be on the road and not in the apex? What's the question? What percentage of fight nights in 2024 will be on the road and not at apex? Hmm, I don't know. You hate the apex? No. <laughs> I just, I just like the road. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what, all right, sir. What, what publication do you write for? Uh, 740 The Fan out of Fargo, North Dakota. He writes for who? Yes. 740 The Fan, North Dakota. Yes. What's your name, sir? Josh Linus. You better be at every fucking fight night. I would love to be. That there. happens next year. I would love to be. You'll okay. be on the road, I'll be there. No matter where we do a fight night, you better be there. Sounds good. Deal. Last one right here. <laughs> Dana. Yeah. Alex Pereira won two belts at Madison Square Garden. Is there any chance of him defending this belt in Brazil in the next time? Hell yes, he will. Um, I've been talking to you guys a lot about Brazil. We're in a big rebuilding phase down in Brazil right now. And obviously, you know, ha ha having another champion now is a big deal. Popular guy. So, yeah, th tonight was definitely a big night for Brazil. 
in the stadium, soccer stadium. In a soccer stadium. Soccer stadium. Okay. Um, you guys all want stadium shows, huh? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Thank you. French market. One question. French market. Um, Dana, Benoit Saint-Denis um, strongly believes there's a threshold glass ceiling with the top five in the lightweight division. He wants to break it. On the team, we think he's probably a fight away from uh, breaking to that uh, top five. Some think it's two, so I want you to uh, cut it out. How far is he away from fighting the likes of Justin Gagey or Dustin Poirier, BSD, Benoit Saint-Denis? Yeah, where's he at now? What, what's his ranking now? He's uh, well, he wasn't ranked, but I'm I'm thinking he's he's going way better than what Frivola was ranked at 14. Well, first of all, great question uh, to ask in this room. All the people in this room make that decision, uh, not me. And uh, you just beat Frivola, who's ranked number 14. So you beat 14. Maybe if the media thinks that he's, you know, he may, he beat 14 easily. He made it look look easy. Maybe he goes to 10 on Tuesday. I, I, I don't I mean, that would be a big jump, but maybe he goes to 10. But what matters to us is, is number 10 can fight number two and number three pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that? What? Can, can the ranked number 10 fight number two or number three pretty oh, soon? Oh, would we put him in a fight with number two or number That's three? That's right. Sure. Are you his agent? <laughs> huh? Are you his agent? Proud Frenchness, you know that. French pride, French pride. Proud Frenchman. I love it, man. Hey, listen, th th this is how it works. I, I, I love it. Um, you know, this is how you get a guy that explodes in, 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 a, uh, in a country or a region or whatever it is. And yeah, so on Tuesday, most of the people in this room and, and the media will determine where he ranks uh, in that division, and we'll see. And then... We'll get back into matchmaking, see when he's ready to turn around. And uh, you, you know what I believe we could do? I believe we could go to France and headline him, you know, on a card there. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, it's exciting. I'm happy about it, and, and, and uh, it's going to be fun. We'll see. Thank you. You guys done? Yeah? Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.